Well, the second Nations League semi-final takes place on Thursday and it's the Netherlands versus England, two sides who are very much on the rise right now. And the place in the final is at stake. I've got Tom, who is going to be bigging up the Netherlands. James is going to be arguing the case for Gareth Southgate's England side. We'll start with you, Tom. Netherlands uh, failed to qualify for the last two major tournaments, but they are bang in form right now. Won a very tricky group to reach this stage. They certainly did, Chris. Uh, you know, France and Germany, I think many before this tournament you know, looked at that group and thought they're going to probably come last in that. But they've turned their fortunes around under Ronald Koeman. They look like they're a totally different beast. I think they're looking like their next generation of players are going to get them to the top. And as you say, the form is good. You just won defeat last time out to Germany. They're picking up goals. They're playing as a team. And the best thing about them as well is they've got youth on their side. They're a growing team with confidence. And they look like one of the best teams in Europe at the minute internationally. Yeah, but the same could be said for England, James. It's fair to say they're still riding that wave of reaching the semi-finals of the World Cup last summer. Nothing seems to stop Gareth Southgate's men, but could the Dutch stop them? I don't think so. And to be honest, there, you mentioned the World Cup, how they've kept that momentum going. Nobody expected, I don't think, England to win their Nations League group either, but they managed to get past Spain and Croatia. There's really two big teams to get through there. And the fact they're in good form as well, it's seven unbeaten. They won their last five games as well in a row. They're scoring goals. They're very, very confident and attacking, something you didn't really expect of an England side in recent years, but this is an attacking team. So for me, England have got to take the win. Yeah, and just because England have proven it a little bit more recently, they're going to have to give the first point to James. And so England going 1-0 up in uh, this one. Let's move on to key players next then. Certainly plenty of talent in these two squads. Uh, Tom, for the Netherlands, they are enjoying the success of Ajax a little bit, aren't they? Plenty of starlets uh, coming through who performed very well for Ajax this season. Who have you picked out? Well, I guess when you're looking at the Ajax uh, connection, you can't look any further past Matthias De Ligt. You know, he's a player that's been linked with a whole host of European clubs. Not, you know, not small clubs, the big boys, the Barcelonas, the Manchester Uniteds. He's guided Ajax to a league title and he forms a formidable part of a defence that's looking one of the best in Europe, as I say. You look alongside him and you've got the colossus Virgil van Dijk, who is arguably the best defender in the Premier League for me. He's just won the Champions League. And look at that performance the other night in Madrid. You know, that, that run against Hoyman's son when he just picked him up, took the ball away from him. For me, if you, if you can find a better centre-back partnership than that in Europe then good luck to you. I cannot see it. And then once those two lads get the ball through the midfield, you've got Memphis Depay up front, a player that didn't do very well in the Premier League, but he's found his feet in the Championnat in Liga. He's scoring goals. He got 10 for Lyon, played nearly every game for them. He's got pace, he's got power, and those are the three you know, key players for me. Well, what about England then? They've got a few issues given that seven players were involved in the Champions League final. So are they going to be looking to some of their other talented members of the squad? I think they'll try and sort of balance it out a little bit there. But, I mean, Tom's there mentioning the great defensive ability there of uh, of the Dutch. But England, for me, I said they're attacking. And you look at some of their plays. The first is Raheem Sterling. He's been absolutely fantastic for Manchester City this season. It is arguably his best campaign, I think, that he's ever had, to be quite honest there. He's assisting goals as well. He's managed to sort of put on that finishing touch, which he didn't have in previous campaigns. So Sterling's up there. And in fact, he wasn't involved in the Champions League final either. So he'll be fresh and ready. Marcus Rashford is the second one. Again, he's not been involved in that European final. So he's fresh and ready to go. He's got pace. He's got bags of pace to burn. And that's what England need. They need pace in their team. They need someone to run at this Dutch defence, which I think those two players will. And then the third one which I'm looking at, it's another young player, but it's Alexander-Arnold, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, I know he was involved in the Champions League final, but he won it with Liverpool there, so he's still riding that momentum. He want to take it into this. If he gets the starting position at right back, which I think he should, he is someone that's proven in the Premier League this season that he's got that ability to get forward. He puts in good crosses. He's good on the set pieces as well. And if he can get at the Dutch defence also, but be defensively sound, I think he's going to be a key player. Well, you've both made very good points. A good collection of players. But I'm going to give it to the Dutch just because of the Virgil van Dijk side of things. He has been, as you say, a colossus for Liverpool. Can he do the same for the Dutch? So it all comes down to the two managers. Then Ronald Koeman, who yep. kind of left the Premier League a little bit with his tail between his legs, has really rebuilt himself and turned this Dutch team around. Yeah, I mean, he left Everton, as you say, Chris, disappointed. Everyone was, I think, very surprised how flat they were in his, in his last few weeks. But I think he, I think the break and the, the, maybe the lack of action week in, week out has given him a new, 
the lease of life, uh, been linked with Barcelona, he's been linked with other top European clubs, and he's, he's a manager that's he's played the game all around the world, he's coached around the world, he's got so much respect, and he's managed to turn this, you know, it's not easy to turn this team of youngsters into a, into a unit that, that can play so, so well, so successfully. You know, they beat the World Cup winners, uh, you know, they've drawn against Germany, these, these are no mean feats by any means, and I just think he's now starting to really enjoy, you know, what other Dutch managers have, have done, they've got back gone back to their roots and I think he's getting the best out of this team and it's good to see because he's obviously a very well respected manager. Yeah and he stopped them falling out as well which is always important which with Dutch squads. Now for Gareth Southgate received plenty of plaudits and rightly so for what he's done with England even for his dress sense as well of course. Uh, can he carry on the work that he's done? I think he can. I mean, who doesn't love a waistcoat to start with there? Yeah. Southgate pulls it off very, very well. But, of course, his managerial ability, I think, has just rocketed since that World Cup. The only thing which he sort of looked at him was maybe his ability to make substitutions quick enough. But I think he's changed that around in recent games. You know, the five straight wins, I think he's getting a little bit better on that and making the bolder decisions to take maybe some of the better players off and, and make those switches. And he just seems to have that sort of feel-good factor around the team at the moment. And they've got the confidence up. They're going into games now under Southgate thinking, we're going to win this one, not, oh, can we take it to an extra time or penalties or something like that. They feel they're going to win that. And that is the winning mentality that Southgate's put in them. Yeah, and just for that reason, I'm going to give it to England. I think England are a little bit further down the road uh, than the Netherlands right now. So James wins the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Boys, finally, what are your scores predictions? Starting with you, Tom. I think it's going to be a close one, this. I think you know the Dutch with a defensive uh, mindset will try and take it into more of a marathon. Um, and I'm going to go for maybe one all uh, on the night and maybe an extra time win. And what about you, James? Not too far away from that, but the other way. So I'm, go I'm going to I'm going to sort of go for a one one or two two in ninety minutes, and then I think England will take it extra time. There you go. Very tight game in prospect. That's what the two guys here think. Let us know your thoughts on social media, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest videos.